Hey everybody, Terry Rombeck with Andover Public Schools here. We are joined by a very special guest today, Jalen Agnew. She's a 2015 graduate of Andover High School, went on to play basketball at Creighton University and just wrapped up a really good career there. Had an outstanding season being named Big East Player of the Year this year. And then just last week was drafted in the second round of the WNBA draft by the Washington Mystics. So Jalen, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. We also have four members of the Andover Middle School uh, uh, girls basketball team as well. We have Brooke Walker, Elena Shetler, Ashlyn Lynch, and Brooklyn Lynch, and Coach Brett Foster as well. We're going to have them ask some questions here in a minute as well. So thanks for everybody being on. Thanks for setting this up. You bet. So Jalen, let's start with you. You've had a crazy couple of months here. Walk us through everything that's kind of gone on for you and your life. Yeah, so um, obviously we had season start and season was super fun. Um, as, like you said, I got Big East Player of the Year, which was awesome. Um, we were excited to go to our third NCAA tournament um, when, since I was at Creighton, which would have been um, the most for any – me and my other um, classmate would have been the most um, for any one or two players um, there at that time. So. That had been super awesome, but obviously with the coronavirus, you know, things kind of came to a halt. Um, but I've been um, at home, you know, working out, still doing schoolwork. Um, and um, obviously, like you said, the last last week I got drafted to the WNBA, which was super fun. Um, I was actually happy that I was home so I could share it with my parents. And if I was still at school, I would have been <laughs> with my teammates, but got to zoom them, zoom them in also like this. So that was fun to share it with them right after as well. But yeah, it's kind of been a whirlwind. You know, everything went super fast. I was at Creighton for five years, but it seems like it was five months <laughs> because it was just, you know, they say time flies when you're having fun. And um, I had a ton of fun while I was there for five years and just um, had to get ready and excited. And I'm excited for this next step. But yeah, it was, um, like I said, whirlwinds with everything going on in the world. Um, but um, definitely some learning that's gone with it as well. So I mentioned this earlier, but we, our district last year went through this process called Portrait of a Graduate, and it was a lot of stakeholders talking about uh, what we want, what skills, what traits, attributes we want out of our graduates. And one of the themes that came up time and time again was resilience. And I'm kind of curious about what this whole experience for you, how, you know, obviously a disappointing end of the season and, and not being able to do everything you wanted to do, but how, what has this taught you about resilience and what does it maybe taught you about yourself just going through this whole thing? Yeah, you know, um, I think about myself, it's taught me that if I want something, I'm going to have to do it myself, you know. Um, no one's, especially right now, we can't get into a gym right now, but no one's going to make me go outside and, um, and you know, do ball handling in my garage. But if I really want something, then I'm going to need to do it myself. So, um, you know, just kind of putting things in that perspective where, um, you, know, you know, you're not going to have everyone tell you what, what to do all the time. And so, um, sometimes you have to put those things into your own hands um, if you want to want to excel at something or want to be great at something um, you can do it when people don't tell you to do it I think that's a good lesson but also in terms of resilience um, I think it's just um, you put in perspective like the like work ethic and hard work um, like like you said everything's been closed down um, obviously no one can really get into gyms or anything but not having to do that, I think, has allowed me to work harder and kind of pushed me to where, you know, where if I was in a gym, I might not be doing the same type of stuff. Um, and so kind of just, I think it, I think with everything going on, it just allowed me to kind of sit back and reflect on, on how much we sometimes take for granted and to now, you know, whether this some, somehow happens again or Hopefully it doesn't, but, um, you know, we, we have learned from it now and kind of just to use this as um, like a push and like a level up to do the next next thing. And so, you know, I've been um, for you guys, you know, you could do I, like I've been doing in my garage. Simply I've just been doing some ball handling stuff in my garage because that's all I can do right now. Or if you have a hoop in your um, driveway, you know, stuff, different stuff like that, um, because those are the only resources we have right now. And so um, kind of just to use, use that maybe sadness you have or um, disappointment that you have that you couldn't finish your year, use that as like a strength to just build up, um, build up what you can do 
and just, you know, work hard at it. And hopefully, you know, they say, they say, um, you know, if it's easy, everyone will do it. So sometimes you make yourself go out there and do it, even though, even if you don't want to, you know, that's going to make you um, set yourself above the rest. So um, just keep those things in mind, I would say, um, during this time. I know it's difficult, but use that kind of disappointment and use that to build a little fire within yourself to try to come out on top after this is all over. Great advice. So each of our players has uh, a question for you. Um, Brooke, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Okay, so how did the college coaches that recruited you feel about you being a multi-sport athlete? Yeah, um, so they actually really liked it that I was a multi-sport athlete because um, in terms of development-wise, they thought I could get much better as time went on since I um, focused on that one sport. So um, one thing I always told them was, so I, I did volleyball, basketball, and track. And um, one thing that helps with that is um, injury-wise, especially, like, you know, you're not doing the same movements. You're not um, doing some repetitions. And so some of that stuff can kind of um, – not allow you to get those nagging or um you know rep repetition injuries so i think that was something they were kind of pleased with in terms of you know once you get specialized too early you're doing the same stuff over and over and so that's one thing where um you know that could be some, like a downfall in some aspects also in terms of, like i said development um i hadn't specialized or focused on just basketball so um I had the, I had room and the chance to get better as the years went on since I since that was the one thing I was focused on for the last five years and so I think you know I didn't hit my ceiling you know um, I still don't think I hit my ceiling but I didn't hit it you know as soon as I could have um, with you know just specializing it with it um, in high school so I think that's one thing um, a lot of people look at too you know just athleticism in general you move a different way in certain sports. Um, in certain sports than others and so I think they like they like seeing that you can be agile um, athletic and because that'll help you know in so many different ways whether that's defensively or offensively so um, they definitely I think enjoyed that that from me okay awesome Elena you want to ask your question yeah so my question is like what advice you would give someone that's hoping to get to where you are like with the WNBA and playing in college yeah, so kind of like I touched on um, with the resiliency stuff. So like these these times right now, um, you know, putting in the work right now when it's when you know some people are sitting on their couch watching Netflix. I know everyone loves Netflix right now, but um, these are the times where you know weather permitting, you know, you could be outside doing the extra stuff. Um, you know, looking at YouTube videos on different ball handling stuff, or going to a hoop and doing different drills that way, and kind of just setting yourself apart and. Um, like I said, you know, not always doing it when someone says, when someone tells you to do it, but doing it on your own terms. Uh, I think that's a, one big thing. Um, but also, you know, school was a huge part of me going to Creighton. Um, if, I don't know if you guys know, I was, I was about Victorian at Andover as well. And so um, Creighton's a great school and, you know, they really look for that. Um, well, at least Creighton, you know, I'm, I'm sure at most schools also as well, but Creighton's a super great school. And so they look at um, my schoolwork and, different extracurriculars that I did as an NHS, um, different stuff like that. And so they really like having that like well-rounded um, person as well coming in, knowing that they have different facets to themselves other than just being, you know, an athlete. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of just, you know, whether it's basketball or another sport, um, like I said, just working hard and doing things the right way. You know, if you have someone come out and shoot with you, rebound for you, like always tell them thanks or, you know, your coaches, like, be super respectful to them because, you know, the coaches, the college coaches could be calling your high school coaches, asking them, like, what they think about you, different stuff like that. And so um, just kind of keeping those things in mind and um, in perspective when, when dealing with that stuff because you never know um, who's going to be watching or who's going to be listening. And, um, yeah, I think those are some big things to keep in mind. Um, but, again, just – just doing the things that'll set you, yourself apart in, in difficult times, especially like this, um, I think is one way where you can um, work hard and get, get to this next level. Awesome. Uh, Ashlyn, you, you wanna go? Oh, uh, sure. Um, so first off, congratulations on getting drafted. Yeah. Um, but on average, how many hours do you think you would practice a day like without 
if quarantine didn't happen and stuff? So if quarantine didn't happen, I would probably, so um, if you guys haven't, I know you guys don't do weights in middle school, but um, in high school, if you guys can get into a weights class, um, that would be good. Cause I'll, I do weights four times a week, I believe. Um, and so I'll have like an hour of that and then probably an hour of like skill work. So that's like ball handling, um, different types of drills, and then probably 30 minutes of a, to an hour of just shooting afterwards. And so um, I know with your as a schedule with school right now, I'm sure it's a little difficult, but um, thankfully for me, I had classes online so I could kind of move at my own pace. So I could, you know, do an hour here, an hour there, an hour later. But um, yeah, I would say probably anywhere from two and a half to three hours a day, I would be, um, I'd be doing basketball stuff. And then that, that doesn't count, that doesn't count, um, you know, like rehab stuff or recovery. Um, we do a lot of rehab stuff to make sure we're preventing injuries and stuff. And recovery, like ice baths, different stretching, stuff like that um, is important as well. So that all adds on. So a lot of the days, um, you know, you're, you're doing stuff for four hours, but um, you'll learn um, if you want to do this, you know, in college about time management and how you kind of have to, um, you know, set, set apart some time to get your schoolwork done. Because you're going to have this certain slow time just for basketball or what you want to play. So um, I think that um, those are some things. That's, that's how my day kind of looks. Um, I would look if I didn't have a quarantine, but um, those are some things you can think about as well um, if you want to go to that next level too. Okay, thank you. Hmm? All right, Brooklyn. Okay, so first I just want to say congratulations, but um, like, was it, did you have this, like, did you have like a personal trainer or something or like, like a coach like that helped you with basketball or was it always you just like taking the initiative to like practice on your own and get better on your own? Yeah, so I know a lot of people that have had personal trainers, which is great, you know. Um, it's always nice for someone to kind of be there to hold you accountable um, if you want to, you know, especially – if you don't have access to the gym or anything like that and they can get you that access like that's super great and they can give you some drills to do and whatnot um but for me i actually didn't have a personal trainer it was just um me and my dad out there doing what we could we'd be at the y um shooting around i would also uh, i know it's a little intimidating but i would also play pickup at the y with some of the um some of the guys that play you know just to kind of go against someone um a little stronger taller um kind of get that um kind of get that different feel for how um, people play so um yeah I'm kind of doing my own thing um I have an older brother so I was kind of used to playing, playing with someone um yeah Shetler you know <laughs> you know about the older brother thing um but um yeah so I kind of I kind of took it upon myself and my dad also helped me um get in the gym when I could but, but like I said if you have a personal trainer that can um that'll get you in there and help you out. That's awesome too. But I, I didn't have, I kind of had to take it upon myself um, to want to get in the gym. I'm kind of curious coach, what, what it's been like from your perspective to, to watch your career and, and watch her continue on and what, what's it been like for, did you ever imagine this would blossom to this, this degree? Actually I did. Uh, she's hands down by one of the best players I've ever coached. And just, not just her basketball ability, but Jalen as a person. Uh, probably one of the most selfish, I mean, not selfish, excuse me, unselfish players I've ever met. She would give up her shot to get her teammates. She cared more about the team and then what, than herself. She didn't, I mean, in middle school, she didn't, it didn't matter to her. She cared more about the team. And that was, I mean, always, she, she even helped out, uh, with my, my first son's name, her and one of the other girls, when he was first born, they kind of go, oh, I like that name. You should name him that, coach. And, but just, just seeing her, I mean, I was so proud. I've been telling everybody about, um, some of my other family members about her accomplishments and what she's been doing. And it's just, I couldn't be more proud, but I, I knew she had it. She's just one of those players that you know. But it's, it's the other things that made her a better player too. Very cool. Thanks, Foster. <laughs> what made you pick basketball? Why did you decide basketball? 
Yeah, so um, I, I actually started basketball first out of all the sports that I did. Um, I think I started playing basketball when I was five. And so um, I kind of um, had basketball, you know, always, always there for me a little bit. Then I started volleyball, I think, in like sixth grade um, on like a club team. And then track, I started in seventh grade. And um, I enjoyed them all. Don't get me wrong. I, I love volleyball and, um, and track. But one thing for track, obviously, um, with excited high jump, that was like my main, um, my main event. Um, you know, you're by yourself. And so I really like the team aspect of basketball and volleyball. And then basketball, I think I had just grown up. It was my first love of all my sports. And um, like I said, the team aspect just made it so much, so much more fun and enjoyable. So I think that's the that's the main reason why I chose basketball. Um, but like I said, it's one of the first sports that I did. So I think I was kind of attached to it also. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I have a question. Oh, go for it. How did you, um, like, what is a main way that you helped lead your team and like be a better leader on the court and off the court? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, for myself, I knew it's super important, um, you know, to not only, you know, know someone on the court, but to hang out with them off the court. So for example, as a senior, this, a senior this past year and, you know, coming in your freshman year, especially to college, you know, everything's new, like you're probably nervous. And so, you know, I took it upon myself to our, the freshman's first night here. Like um, I took them all, drove them to dinner and kind of sat down, asked them questions about, you know, what they were nervous about or if anything, they needed anything like to let them know I was there for them um, and just you know get to know them um, out like on on a personal level because you know you're going to spend all this time with them and you know it helps to know you know what they like what makes them tick different stuff like that so you know kind of how they operate um, and then just to know that you're there for them you know with with anything so if they ask me a question whether that's hey what teacher should I get for math 201 or you know um, what what's your favorite place to go outside of campus to eat like different stuff like that anything I just let them know know that I was there for them and then on the court um some big things that I think you know always talking always giving high fives no matter what like if someone messes up a play should be like all right you got it next time next time or if they come off the floor if they have a question just explain to them um you know like well I think the coach said this this and this or you do this this way because of this. Um, it kind of always just be like eyes and ears for everyone else, I think is a big thing. So you kind of, you'll, as you get older, you're, you'll understand, but you kind of have to think outside of yourself and think, you know, as a freshman, how would, how would they be thinking at this time? Or as a junior, senior, how, how are the underclassmen thinking at this time? And so you kind of just have to get outside of yourself and really um, help those around you more because it'll also help yourself, I think. Yeah, from when you played at Andover, middle school and high school, what would be some of your top memories uh, from your playing time here? Yeah, so I said before before you got on, I said um, shaving your head after you went undefeated was <laughs> was one of the fun memories from middle school. Um, but yeah, we went undefeated both years in middle school, which was super fun. Um, we had a great group there. Um, and then we went to state my sophomore year, I believe, in high school. Um, and that was, that was also just like super great, um, to go to state and be able to kind of show your stuff to some of the bigger 5A schools. Um, and then let's see, I don't know. I think one thing that has, um, you know, transpired from both high school and college, just the everyday stuff, you know, spending it with your teammates and your coaches, you know, you, nothing can beat that stuff, you know, just doing stuff on the bus. Like I remember sitting next to one of my former teammates Riley Messina and we were listening to like I like will never forget this for some reason like a Fergie song like dancing like on the bus like just having so much fun and those are like the little things that you can't take for granted and um just that every day you know ins and outs of every day are the things I think I remember the most honestly just because of the people that I shared it with and um the fun times that we had just the people made it so much so much more fun to be around and so much fun to be a part of well, Jalen, thank you so much for being part of this. Uh, girls and coach, thanks for being a part of this as well. And uh, Jalen, obviously, all of Andrew's going to be looking uh, to 
follow your the rest of your career and rooting for you. And we have a bunch of new uh, Washington Mystics fans here in the middle of the heartland. Awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs>